go ahead and turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 14. <clears throat> In Matthew chapter 14, um, you have the disciples on a ship at sea, um, and beginning at verse 26. The Bible says, when the disciples saw him walking, sorry, um, you have the disciples on the ship at sea. Um, <clears throat> Jesus comes walking out, walking on the water, heading out to the ship, to the disciples. In verse 26, And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered, uh, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Now, <clears throat> In verse 26, Jesus walking on the water, um, the disciples, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Now, in Proverbs chapter 29, in verse 25, the Bible says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. So the Bible says you want safety, it is only with the Lord, not inside your ship. Because remember, they were in their ship. The Bible didn't say they became afraid in this boisterous winds. And again, the, the Bible says that the winds were tossing, the waves were pushing, the ship was being tossed about. It didn't say they were afraid then. They said they were afraid when they saw Jesus. So they, they, were sa they felt safety within man-made ships, not with the Lord. The Bible says it's the opposite of that. Safety is only with God, only when your heart rests with the Lord Jesus Christ, not when you rely on man. They were tossed about on a man-made ship, but when they saw God's work, and think about what they saw. They're standing on the ship, being tossed about, and they see God's work taking place in front of them, and they feared. And instead of instinctively wanting to trust in God, they instinctively wanted to trust in man's ship. <clears throat> now, fortunately for you, God's response to that is always a good response. Matthew chapter 14, verse 27, But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. You see, the Lord knows that the moment you see something that you can't comprehend, which is God's majesty, God's work, when you see that already in a position to where you're trusting in you, you're going to be fearful. But the Lord's not going to hold that against you. He's not going to be upset with you. He's going to tell you, be of good cheer at his eye. Be not afraid. Now going down to Matthew uh, 14 and verse 28, Peter's response to that, and again, all the disciples were fearful. It comes Peter in with that group of them. They were all fearful. But the moment Peter knew this was God at work, his response to that, verse 28, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. He wanted to get immediately out of man's ship and get out there, even if it took walking on water, to be with the Lord. That actually should be your mindset in everything you do in your life. The moment you see the opportunity to serve God. The moment you see the opportunity to move away from what you know. Because that's where he was at. That whole ship, the whole point of this passage, to show you what they knew was man's ship. What, what they knew was what man had done. And the moment they saw God's work in front of them, even if it took crossing the water, the stormy sea, and walking on it with no help from what man can do, that's what you should want to do. And that's what Peter wanted. 
Peter wanted to get out of what the comfort of that ship, the comfort and security of what he knew and what he was used to. He wanted to get out there and be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I got it. Every part, every walk in your life, every part of serving God is going to feel that way. I mean, those of us that have gone out and passing out Bible tracts, going door to door, knocking on doors, you can attest no matter how many times you've done it. You still have those butterflies in your stomach. You still have those nerves. I'm about to go and talk to them about something that I know they're going to reject. And unfortunately, that's the world we're in. There's like a 98% chance you go to try to hand somebody a Bible track, they're going to reject it. You can usually leave your house with five Bible tracks and be like, I probably have enough. That, that's probably how many people I'm going to encounter today that will take that Bible track and keep it and not be like, oh, no, 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 that's okay. But the mindset you have to have is I got to get away from what's comfortable, what feels safe, and walk on the water to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Peter did. He said, Lord, if that's you over there, let me walk on water if necessary, but let, tell me it's okay for me to come and be with you. To me, for me to cross whatever I have in front of me to come and serve you. He wanted to do the impossible. And that's what he looked at. And again, remember, the Bible says the winds were boisterous, the sea was blowing, the winds were, there was a storm. He wanted to walk on that. He wanted to do what to that point was impossible to do. And he was willing. The moment Jesus said, come, what did Peter do? The Bible says he got down out of the ship, verse 9, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He saw what it took to get from where he was at to get to where the Lord wanted him to be. And he saw the, the crashing waves and the boisterous winds and the unraging sea. And what did he want to do? He said, Lord, if you say it's okay that I embark on that journey, tell me to do it. And the moment God said yes, he walked on water to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, I say all the time, my decision-making process, whenever I want to try to do something for the Lord, or I want to get out there and, and start expanding ministry and things like that, I always say my mindset is you leap off the cliff and trust that the Lord will build a bridge under you or He'll teach you to fly. Now, I don't know that I've ever done it to that extent, but that's the kind of faith God wants you to have. That you don't, don't, you don't worry about what the path will be. You trust that God will carry you through it. And then you step forward and start going. And that's exactly what Peter did. He's like, I don't care what the path is in front of me or how crazy it might seem for me to step forward. But I'm ready to step out of the ship and onto the water. Just all I got to do is know God. You say that's okay for me to go that direction. I want to serve you. I want to follow you. I want to be with you. Even if it means following you out onto a raging sea. And Jesus said, come. And Peter did. He walked down, out, climbed down out of that ship and he walked on water. Man, that's, that's the mindset you should have in your spiritual life. You're willing to climb out of that comfort in that ship and walk on the raging sea just to be with the Lord. Just to serve God. Now, when you look at what Peter did in verse 29, because it says he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He was doing, and think about this, because as we move to the next verse, he was doing what he asked God to let him do. He asked the Lord, let me come down onto the sea and come to you. He was doing what he asked God to do. Jesus said yes, so he was doing what Jesus told him he could do. Literally. He said, do it. But then, verse 30, when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. That's an interesting thing that happened right there. 
He was doing what he asked God to let him do, what Jesus told him he could do. <clears throat> and then he got afraid. Now, I think what I find most interesting about this passage is it wasn't the impossibility of walking on water that caused him to fear, that caused him to doubt. Because he got down out of the water and he started walking. And it wasn't the crash or the, the idea of doing the impossible. That's not what the Bible says there. It, it, it says when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Now, what's interesting is if you jump back to verse 24, <clears throat> back in verse 24, the Bible says, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. You see, he had already been dealing with that when he was in the ship. It didn't say he was fearful then. It didn't say he doubted then. He was already dealing with the winds and the waves and the storm. He had been dealing with that the whole time they were in the ship waiting for Jesus to get out there. So when he got down out of the ship, the Bible says he walked on the water. It, wasn't, it didn't say he walked on the water and then he realized he was doing something impossible and got afraid. No, it says he saw the normal things in his life that he had already been dealing with. But the moment those things were present, while he's trying to serve God, he got afraid. That's exactly what happens in every Christian's walk. It's not the struggles of life. It's not the, or excuse me, it's not the, the perils of serving God. It's not the idea of trusting the Lord that stumbles them and makes them stop serving God. It's the trials and perils of this normal life. Trials and perils that they deal with and they face every day that makes them turn away from serving the Lord. You want to know what your biggest threat in serving God is? It's not serving God. Your biggest threat is the same life you live in right now. The same walk that you're walking doing nothing for the Lord. It's that walk, it's those trials, it's that peril that will cause you to turn away. Now when you turn away, he, he, could, he could have easily stopped walking the Lord, got back in the ship. He'd still be dealing with the boisterous winds and the crashing waves. The only difference is, is he's not serving God. He's not moving toward Jesus anymore. And it's always this life that will stumble you. It's not the service in God. It's not uh, task and duties. It's not actually telling somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ that will turn you away. It's your flesh that will hinder you. It's not, oh man, I'm going to build a church and I'm going to get up and preach and I'm going to serve God that will stumble you. It's, oh man, do I have time because I've got to get, be at work and I won't be home from work until this and you know, and I've got to mow the lawn and I've got to literally trivial things in this life are what keep you from serving God, not the actual service to God. And that's what stumbled Peter. That's what made him doubt. Not the impossibility. Because that's what I gotta tell you. You have me on a ship right now on calm water, on any kind of the idea of stepping out there and walking on it, that would seem impossible. That's not what struggled him. The Bible says he walked on the water. It was this life. The normal things you see in this life stumbled him. Things he had already been dealing with. Things he was dealing with before he asked God to let him walk out on the water. Things he was dealing with that weren't so much that they kept him from walking on water. But the moment he was trusting God, the moment he was being faithful, then this world started beating on him and grabbing a hold of him and trying to shake him. And it caused him to doubt. It's always something else. Something we face all the time that stumbles you the moment you try and serve God. 
I remember whenever I was much, much younger, uh, newlywed, hadn't been married very long, trying to be in church every Sunday, trying to be in church every Tuesday night, trying to be in church every Thursday night, trying to serve God. And man, we couldn't go a Sunday morning without arguing and fighting. The moment, we didn't argue and fight Saturday morning. We didn't argue and fight uh, Friday morning. But man, come Sunday morning, the same things that did not cause a fight or disputes or frustration or struggles, those same things all of a sudden caused a lot of problems, man, when it was time to get dressed and get up and go to church. To the point that many a times we miss church because things of this life would struggle. The moment you start trying to walk toward Jesus, things that don't bother you any other day bothered, bothered us on those days. Again, fortunately, the Lord knows, man. He, he already understands. Back in verse 30, when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And immediately, as soon as he started sinking, he got afraid because of what this life had to throw at him. He got afraid and he started sinking. And the moment he started sinking, he cried out to the Lord. Beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. Verse 31, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. The moment he let this life struggle him, the Lord didn't say, man, you were walking on the water. You could see all you got to do is keep coming to me. You want to be distracted by your everyday life? That's when he didn't do that. Instead, he reached out and he caught him. So the moment you do struggle and you will struggle, the moment you struggle, fortunately, you can still call out to Jesus. You can still call out to the Lord and he'll grab you. And it doesn't say he let him sink a little. It didn't say he let him learn his lesson. He immediately grabbed him. And then he said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Man, that's one of those rhetorical questions. The Lord knew, he saw he knew what caused him to doubt. One of those rhetorical questions, man, you should ask yourself. Every time you struggle, you should ask yourself, what, what is it that's making me doubt? I look at what the Lord's already done for me. I look at the amazing things the Lord has done for me. Why, why am I doubting? I look at what God is. I mean, every time we get in a plane and we go to fly, the thought of being concerned that something could go wrong or anything like that. Man, I think the Lord, the Lord carried me here. He will carry me through. And if he's brought me to this point, he can bring me further. We're talking about the God that literally flicked his fingers and the stars were in the sky. The God that spoke the world into existence. He didn't have to work at it. He spoke the world into existence. That God. <laughs> Why do I doubt? Where? And that's what he's asking you. Wherefore is thou doubt? Peter saw him walking on the water. Peter walked on the water. Why would you doubt at that point? That's what the Lord asks you every day in your life. That's what you should ask you every day in your life. Wherefore? Didst thou doubt? 